Hi, everybody. I'm meteorologist Joe Chaffee. We're going to uh, take the time now to sort of explain how this is all going to play out with respect to this nor'easter. And uh, by the way, thank you for being here on YouTube. And if you like my video, uh, you uh, please could subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's absolutely free. You'll be notified when new videos show up. I have two other videos that I posted up earlier today that get into the meteorology behind the, this weather system. And also, I did a video on the long range as we head through the end of January and the beginning of February. So go ahead by all means and take a look at that. Now, uh, uh, I'm going to show you all the models today were pretty much the same. Some have a little bit more, some have a little bit less. They all seem to agree, however, on the scope of the wind. Um, so that might be, I think, the primary player here uh, in terms of, uh, of what we're going to expect. So let me take you through what's going to happen. First off, there are no issues for the rest of today and into Sunday, uh, uh, other than the fact that we're sitting in low overcast because of this uh, persistent flow that we've had off the ocean. The bottom part of the atmosphere has been saturated, and we've had no dry push of air of any kind to kind of clean it, clean up, uh, clean house, so to speak. So there's an area of rain right now in the Gulf states. If you look on the uh, surface map that I'm putting up here now, uh, overlaying, uh, you've got the temperatures and uh, the wind direction here. There's a lead low that's coming out of the Gulf states that's producing some rain uh, and some heavy rain over parts of uh, Alabama, Georgia, back up into South Carolina and eastern Tennessee. So that for area is actually going to be lifting out first. And you can see it here. I'm using the GFS model at the moment. You can see it here by Sunday morning. I actually bring some rain into central New Jersey, uh, and then that goes out. Uh, but the main low is back to the west, and, and by tonight, 1 a.m., um, or 1 a.m. Sunday, there's a low kind of shaped like an egg on its side uh, sitting in southern Oklahoma uh, that runs northeastward. And this has a very strong system aloft that, it, that it's dealing with. Uh, I'll show you that, too. But first off, now we're into Sunday afternoon. We still don't have any rain of consequence here, but we do have this developing uh, onshore flow, this wind coming in from off the ocean. Uh, there is, to the north, a big high that's building, relatively big high, and then you have this low pressure to the south, and you have this little wave that's coming off the Carolina, uh, coming off the Carolina coast, this lead wave. These lines you see here, okay, these are called isobars. These are lines of equal pressure. And the tighter those lines are together, the stronger the surface wind, because you have uh, a difference in pressure between the high and the low, okay, and it's over a, a shrinking amount of distance between the two of them. So as that distance shrinks and the pressure, uh, the pressure difference increases, uh, you have a, a tightening pressure gradient so, uh, from the high to the low. So that results in strong winds. And this is our issue for later Sunday night into Monday evening. So now as we approach Sunday evening, rain, measurable rain, is up to about New York City and Long Island. I would suspect that the leading edge of this is light. And you can see all this rain back uh, down through Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky. The low is uh, now getting close to Nashville, the, the main low, which is the primary low here. And it sort of edges straight eastward. Now... If you follow back, you can see how you see how wide apart these lines are, the pressure, the isobars. As we move through time, going into uh, Sunday night into Monday morning, those lines get extremely tight. Those the isobars get extremely tight. The high has not moved at all. Uh, it's still sitting up here, and here's the low. So now look at all look at all these lines of equal pressure. They're almost on top of each other. So that creates a very strong uh, wind field, very tight pressure gradient. And that is going to generate strong winds, I think, of on the order of 30 to 40 knots with gusts into the 50, 60 knot range from the Delaware coast and eventually up to Cape Cod. Now, it's going to be a question of timing. Uh, Monday morning, that pressure gradient is tight all the way into southern New England. So at this point, uh, I think everybody's going to be in gales. Now, the low moves east. So during the day on Monday, we get into some very heavy rains uh, that start to move northward. 
When I say very heavy rains, it'll probably be on the order of uh, an inch, an inch and a half in some places. And up in the colder part air, relatively speaking, you start to see uh, snow and sleet being indicated across upstate New York and into New England, but it's pretty far up in upstate New York. The low center at this point is in eastern Virginia. So what I think happens eventually, because of the structure of this system, this first area of rain will wind up moving up and out. So I'm thinking at some point Monday evening, the rain is going to come to an end. And the winds are going to start to diminish somewhat because if you notice, there's a big gap between this line of, of equal pressure and the the, where the surface slope is. There is no, from, from Long Island, from just south of the south shore of Long Island to where the surface low is being shown on the GFS, there's not a whole lot of pressure change. All the, the tight gradient now is shifting up to the north. So after we get that 12 to 15 hour period of strong winds, the winds are going to drop off to some degree. Now, with respect to the rain, what I think is going to happen is as that low moves northeastward and uh, out toward the uh, south of Nantucket by Tuesday morning, there's going to be some backside moisture with this. And I think we'll probably see another round of rain, although I think it'll be lighter in nature, on the backside later Monday night and on Tuesday. And in fact, it still even has it here through Tuesday afternoon. So I think this pretty much is how it's going to play out. So the worst of this for much of the area from from Cape May to Montauk is going to be um, early Monday morning to late Monday evening. Winds across southern New Jersey will probably start to diminish later Monday afternoon, and then they'll start diminishing over Long Island uh, and points uh, north and east as we go through the evening and then Monday night. So uh, Monday daytime is not going to be fun into Monday evening. Um, I want to show you the wind field here. I'll get a little tighter so you can see what kind of winds are being generated. Now, by the way, I've seen a few people go to the um, natural Armageddon conclusion. Uh, that That's where someone says, I have a headache, therefore it must be a brain tumor. Okay, um, not everything is Sandy. I've actually seen people compare this to Sandy. This really needs to stop. All right, it really needs to stop. Uh, it's, 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 it's not... Silly to call that silly is um, I'm being kind uh, for lack of a stronger word to come to mind. I'm being kind. OK, uh, you need to deal, deal with these things uh, one at a time and deal with what's in front of you, not what uh, in, 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 as a measure of, of what has happened. This is going to produce a nasty round of weather for a number of hours. Yeah, there could be some. Um, tree issues. There could be some power issues with all of this. This is what happens in a nor'easter. None of this is unusual. Okay, so here's the the um, the GFS. Um, the GFS winds and watch in here. So the areas in yellow, and orange, and red is 30 to 50 knot sustained winds starting from Sunday night, and then you can see there's Monday morning, there's Monday afternoon. And then by Monday night, it's already out to the east. The GFS is actually a little bit faster. It brings the stronger winds a little earlier on uh, by Monday morning and then moves them out by Monday evening. Uh, when we look at the NAM model, and I, you know, the NAM model is pretty aggressive, although now it seems to have also caught on to the idea that maybe it's a little bit faster. But you can see how the wind field grows into Monday morning and then moves out by Monday evening. So it's going to be, you know, a, a, a 12 to 15 out 12 to 15 hour period of gales and some storm force winds offshore. Um, but after that, it, it moves out and we start to see weather conditions somewhat uh, get improved, relatively speaking, although there still is going to be uh, some uh, you know, issues regarding rain. We're not going to see any sun around here probably until about Wednesday. Now, the one other thing I want to look at is the tidal surge. And this is uh, because of the fact that we have this situation. Thankfully, we are in a cycle of the moon. Uh, we are in between the full moon and the new moon. So the uh, 
the tide is in a low tide cycle, which is good because that should help alleviate any kind of coastal flooding issues. Uh, we have a peak tide uh, tomorrow evening. This is uh, the National Weather Service's tidal search forecast for non-tropical storms. And, you know, it generates a, a rather uh, broad area of two to three foot above normal tides from coastal New Jersey up through the south shore of Long Island to about to central Suffolk County and also into Long Island Sound. Uh, we have three to four feet in the darker red. Uh, depending on which model run you go, they expands on one run and shrinks on another, but uh, this is three to four feet and three to four feet in Long Island Sound. So you know what? I think the best way to look at it is just look at this as all one area uh, where the tides could run uh, uh, two to as much as four feet above normal at the time of high tide. And there's a little dash of purple there, and that's actually uh, on, on the purple on the scale. Uh, that is a, um, let me unzoom so you can see the scale. That little purple is tides greater than four feet, and that would probably be confined to New York Harbor and uh, around Staten Island. So the surrounding counties of New Jersey, uh, down along uh, Essex, H Hudson, Union County, uh, down to um, uh, northern Monmouth County. You know, there might be some uh, coastal flooding issues right here through uh, Bayonne Bay, Barrett, Raritan Bay, and so on. So, uh, you know, just kind of want to pay attention to this. Uh, this is nothing like... Um, you know, if this were a full moon, uh, I think you probably could add a couple of feet to this. But again, because we were in the uh, first quarter, the uh, in between the, the full moon and the new moon, yeah, there'll be some coastal flooding, uh, but I don't think it'll be horrible coastal flooding. Um, let's call it a broad area of moderate coastal flooding uh, with maybe some areas getting it a little bit stronger than that. And I'll, we'll keep atten uh, close attention on this uh, because the timing of all of this has coinciding with the high tide in terms of the storm uh, track and the strongest winds um, is is important. So if we move things over by a couple of hours, it, it might alleviate the tide uh, somewhat, or it might um, accentuate it a bit more. The fact that the model's a little bit faster is probably uh, is a positive because um, it, that means that the strongest winds are already dropping off at the time of the high tide coming in um, to, on Monday evening. And you can have maybe slightly less coastal flooding. But if, if the system is a couple of hours slower and we're still dealing with whole gales uh, at uh, 7 or 8 o'clock Monday night, that could make the tides just a little bit uh, higher. We have a high wind watch up for coastal New Jersey and Long Island, New York City, and much of and coastal Connecticut uh, in anticipation of the strong gusty winds. Um, the, I, I think on a scale for this nor'easter, you know, we'll call it maybe a moderate. A uh, moderate one, um, you know, I, you know, I, I don't like to judge, prejudge them, um, if only because of the fact that, um, you know, it's looking back after they're over with that you, you kind of have the, 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 the better idea as to how um, it, it really turns out in terms of strength. Um, it, it, it looks formidable, but it's not imposing by any stretch of the imagination. So, you know what, folks, a little common sense, okay? Um, Latest posts on the website, meteorologistjoechoffee.com. Local weather forecasts on my app. Uh, you can download that. The link will be coming up on the card. And once again, if you like my videos, I got two other ones from earlier today uh, with regards to this storm. And also, and one of those is on the long range and whether we're going to be going into an, uh, back to a winter, wintry type pattern as we go into the, uh, uh, the end of January and the very beginning of February. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday into Sunday. No big problems until late Sunday afternoon at the earliest in southern areas and Sunday night into mo and Monday uh, for areas as you go north.